to another episode of Team Bayfield Support the Scene. We have so many special guests. We have the Anti Queens, and of course, we have our special co-host, Ray. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us. <laughs> now, <laughs> I hope anybody watching, you're already familiar with the Anti Queens because you are absolutely amazing. You have one of the, the best live shows that I've ever seen, and people talk about it. It's like Teenage Head. Everybody talks about when they've seen Teenage Head. For anybody who's gotten to see the Anti Queens play live, they talk about that time they saw the Anti Queens. <laughs> so my first question is, what is it about the Anti Queens that have made you one of the most talked about acts in the business? I don't, I don't know that we are the most talked about in the business. That I'd love to think that's true. <laughs> Probably our live show because that's really like where we get to be ourselves the most and. Uh, just do what we love doing and that's the main reason we're here is to perform so yeah we get pretty like angsty in your face and we crack stupid jokes and we spill beer all over the place and uh, all over ourselves <laughs> yeah it's just every time we play it's different so I would say that's that's probably what's most talked about Was yeah ever... I think part of it too is like just to kind of add on to what Emily said because it's all true but I think a lot of people really like and identify with like our authenticity and like we go on stage and we are exactly what we are showing you these are like it's genuinely us on stage and as someone that's always like liked going to concerts I always pick up on that in bands and I've always really loved that so in talking about like the uh, about your presence during a live show, are there any other particular bands that you remember seeing that made you go like, oh, that's how I want to be seen on stage? Um, for me, honestly, uh, the Creep Show. I saw them years and years and years ago, and I've seen them live so many times. But I, I don't know. They were a band just kind of going off what we were saying before. Is like they look like they're having fun on stage, and I just remember like I want to do that. And also the Distillers, like. Mm. I just loved watching, I got to see them only once, but I remember seeing Brody Dal saying, I'm like, she looks so fucking cool, I want to be her, so. I was going to say dis Distillers, I feel like that's just every, like, punk rock girl's dream, like, that's been, like, everyone's idol, so that's definitely. Definitely for our generation, 100%. Yeah. She was, like, for our generation, it's, like, we're, we're a little young to really fully identify with like the Runaways and Joan Jett, but then we had Brody Dal and she was doing the same thing, but in our more current time. And it was like, how could you, how could you be a punk rocker woman and not identify with her in those early years? Like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that kind of leads into this next question, which is um, fill in the blank. The anti Queens would not exist if it weren't for who or for what. Ooh. I would say probably just other women in music, like up there showing us that you can do what the guys do and be just as good, if not better, you know, it's like really empowering. So for me, yeah, like women in music, all different genres, because I listen to like a vast majority of things, but from like jazz to rock to pop to folk, whatever, like seeing women has always been really inspiring for me personally. It's definitely a motivational part of all of this is going into it, knowing that you've seen another woman do it, you know that it's possible for you. Whereas, you know, growing up, I didn't listen to a lot of female fronted or all female bands. They, they just weren't, I guess, as accessible to me. So we had all the punk rockers of the late nineties and early two thousands for me. And there weren't really a ton of women that were super prominent in that genre like the Vans warp tour and all of that mm -hmm. but um yeah i don't know yeah but thankfully, uh, thankfully especially yeah. in our area we're seeing a number of more like more bands coming out that are either uh, centered on like a female singer or uh like full female punk bands as well do you have like a piece of advice or something that you could impart to them because you've already had to deal with that shit beforehand just fucking do it just do it <laughs> <laughs> don't even don't even think about it. Just write your fucking songs. Go on stage. Be awkward. 
get over that like learning process just do it yourself because everything that we've done we've gotten here just doing it ourselves like in our own personal careers and then together as well and it's like you have to just be willing to do it and put yourself out there just do it put up with all the bullshit (laughs) that too (laughs) <laughs> we had a lot of hurdles to kind of overcome before getting into the studio and on the label's deadline to do it. So half the songs were already written and we had been playing them live, but they were good and they needed a home on an album. And we, it was a no brainer. We're like, these, these are going on the album. We, these are our songs. And then we had to write another half albums worth of songs in like, I feel like we had less than a couple months to do it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in, I mean, Emily comes in with great song ideas and then we just kind of build around them together and make them what they are. That first album was, a lot of it was like originally like, it's un- almost untouched. They're just like authentic, just songs we built in the jam space together. A lot, and a lot of it's like half like really old songs that we just never like did anything with. And then the other half was the one that like, we were kind of just like rushed. To do, I guess, but like we still like jam them out and try to take our time with them. But I would say that the newer ones are actually the ones that we wrote, like new the newer songs on the album on that album, like are probably my favorites. Yeah, I mean, you go like you think about it too. It's just some of the songs on that album I wasn't really even around for. I think Game Over was the first one I officially wrote with the Annie Queens as a member of the band. But um, there were a couple I'm pretty sure that were already done, like Miss Scarlet's Old as Dirt. (laughs) (laughs) But we love that song so much, it's never going to die. It'll be at every show, I'm sure of it. That's my favorite song, actually, off all your (laughs) album, Miss Scarlet. (laughs) We love fun to play live. You can get, like, real sassy with it. Oh, yeah. At one show, I was throwing tampons into the audience. (laughs) I don't know if I'll do that again. <laughs> Not you. But oh no, no, I put them in like red paint. I like made some. Paint off. Oh yeah, I did. I put like red paint on them. Or like made some weird concoction of like like chocolate syrup and red food coloring and like dip them in, like kind of let them dry. And, then... <laughs> and I guarantee you somebody has one like in a shadow box just hanging in their apartment somewhere. <laughs> I hope so. I wish I kept one because that's like a hilarious story. It's (laughs) like that's something that'll be auctioned off to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or like a hard rock cafe restaurant one day. (laughs) Just this like crazy pretend dirty tampon. Someone's just like eating their burger beside it like what the fuck? I now hope that happens. That's a new goal of mine. <laughs> Fingers crossed we'll, we'll get to see some Canadian dates, but I know you just announced as well in 2022 you're going to be going to Berlin to be playing with Bad Religion, Lagwagon, Razor. That's insane. Yeah, We're really excited. That's like our first official show that we've booked and announced since this whole thing. So I feel like it's a good omen for us, but I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Definitely a, a doozy of a, a show. It was like woke up and saw the poster and like what <laughs> oh so you weren't notified ahead of time and just like okay let me let me know the, the morning it's like two that. days before yeah we knew i think we knew about the festival but they didn't tell us which bands were playing so i was like i thought it would be like just like a couple local german bands or whatever like no like crazy headliners like that I was not expecting that so me either that was very exciting <laughs> And not only are you playing with great bands, but you made it onto the poster. You didn't like no longer in the and others format. <laughs> we usually are. I was like, I that know. was thing. You were like, oh my god, we're actually on the poster. We're not called in many more this time. Yeah. <laughs> or like the fine print at the very bottom yeah. that is like a magnifying glass to see. Yeah. <laughs> As soon as you get a chance to play live, are there any other, like, if I could, if I could sacrifice one of my feet to open for a band, what band is it going to be? Mm. Doesn't have to be a foot. It's doable, though. I mean, you asked me to sacrifice a hand, we were going to have problems because I won't be able to open for that yeah. band. But I mean, <laughs> you have the subjective body parts. Uh, this is like on the spot and extremely difficult. 
um, you know what? I'm just going to go out there and like, I want to, this might be funny, but like, I really would love to open for some 41. Like, I would love to do that. That would be amazing. With brown sound? Obviously. Okay. <laughs> no, brown Val sound places him for the show. <laughs> they switch spots and they play <laughs> Hey, fair trade, man. Like, I'd be, I'd do that. I mean, I'd let Tom take care of the leads, like the really in-depth solos, but like, I'd be there and I'd do what I could. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to say Foo Fighters because if I don't meet oh, Dave yeah. Lowe by the time I die, I'm going to cry. <laughs> That's it. Honestly, either or. I'm good with either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So growing up, I'm a, I just turned 18 a couple days ago. I uh, always wanted to find like a fully girl punk band. Like I play the bass. My dad's been teaching me how to play since I was six. And coming across you through Jillian, it was kind of incredible for me because the only group I ever found was really fit for rivals who had a girl uh, header, but the rest of the band was male. So how important is it for you to come at not only like your teen but also your younger audience to see we're girls and we rock and we're gonna do everything boys can do and more oh, oh so Happy important birthday <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like oh my god playing all ages shows is like such a goal for us it's just like we never get to do it enough because no every place we've had is a bar that's either like 19 plus or 21 plus in the u.s so yeah. If we had more say over that, I would love to do that because that's so key and like so important. And that's I mean, like I, where you make like your diehard fans, you know, these yeah. people, like these young kids are going to grow up listening to your records and be a fan of you and like continue to grow with you. So yeah, that's huge. And I think it's really important for us on a personal level, level too, because growing up, I didn't have any female local bands at all i was in one we weren't that great but we went up and did it but there there were no other like predominantly female bands in my scene that i at least knew of but we had we had like we had chicks and girls and you know we had that but for the all ages local scene yeah there wasn't a ton so if we can put ourselves into local scenes that are all ages like we're gonna take that opportunity and we have there's a um, there was an all ages venue that we would hit all the time on every single tour in the US and it was in Plattsburgh, New York. Remember the Rota Gallery? It was um a shared creative space by the local arts community and they would it, they shared the space with a dojo. So there's like we're playing in front of a dojo like the room was separated and we're just surrounded by kids of all ages and I remember that's that was always one of my favorite stops on the tour and then, you know, and I know Emily too loved doing Pooza on the main stage where kids could be in the audience. And like, that's always so great for us to see that. We love that so much. You should do that. You should create an all ages scene, Rachel. I will. I'll make it happen <laughs> and I'll book you guys. Yep. We'll come play. <laughs> I mean, seriously, my, my 54 year old dad loves you guys now too. He came <laughs> over on my birthday. And he said, I don't want to listen to any punk that sounds like what I've heard before. And I played him three songs and he followed you guys on Spotify, oh. which is a feat for him. He's very picky with music. Awesome. I don't know why, but they do. <laughs> That's always um, a work of greatness. If you can get like a middle-aged man to just say like, you know what? I was wrong about everything I knew before. This band kicks my ass. That's how you know exactly. you it. <laughs> It's definitely happened before too. <laughs> For everybody who is watching, can you give us a couple of examples of other great Canadian bands that just don't quite get the love and respect that they deserve? Mm, there's so many. It's so hard. Can I be a super big dick and say Black Cat Attack? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh, I had to. It was funny. There's so um, many nasty riffs. Everybody has to hear Black Cat Attack. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Um, but look... It's really hard because, I mean, all the bands we know, we know from, you know, playing shows and we see them getting love, you know, like, that's a tough call because I feel like at this point, I don't know. What do you think, Em? One mm, name comes to mind, Cross Dog. I love Cross Dog so much. True. Yep. 
they should absolutely get more attention 1000 percent. they are incredible and they've been going at it for so long and they're just so aggressive and they have a lot to say and they you know they put a lot of politics into their into their music and it's from the you know tracy's perspective which is very different from a lot of political bands a lot of them are male fronted to be honest and it's just it's nice to have that woman's political point of view in the scene so you know what good fucking call emily cross dog <laughs> final answer <laughs> Um, it would be cool to see Bad Waitress get some more love, you know? They're a band that I feel like the scene could spend more energy bringing, rising them up a bit because they're fucking, they're something else, you know? They're a force and they've got a lot of talent and skills and a really cool creative outlook. So that's another band too, Bad Waitress, definitely. Uh, for people who are in the dark and they haven't got to experience the Anti-Queens yet, which do you think is the best song to introduce them to? The Brad in me wants to say Miss Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a good song, seriously. My dad loves it too, right? So perfect. I mean, yeah, that one has just the right amount of sass to like let you know what you're in for. Oh yeah. Kind of thing. Um, or maybe like worse than death, because it's kind of like easy sing along, still kind of like angry and angsty, but has melody and kind of, you know, easy to figure out the chorus, too. And a pretty wholesome message, too. So, I mean, you know, we're not dicks. We care. <laughs> Before we say goodbye, we always like to ask this question as well. Are there any local bands right now that you're listening to that we should as well? Ooh. I love um, I love Bad Waitress and The Dirty Nil. Um, those are two that I listen to pretty regularly. But and you know, some love to our local uh, or sorry, our fellow label mates, the Creep Show. That would be awesome. They're so fun. If you have not listened to the Creep Show, you need to do yourself a favor and do it because easily one of the most fun bands. Yeah. Like, and every album too. They're all fun and they're all great, and and you can see the style change, and it's just still fun. Yeah. It's great. It's awesome. And we've loved each of us have loved them for like years. Like, I don't yeah. want to make them feel all old, but like I've been listening to them since high school, so. <laughs> I'm sure Chuck can't wait to hear that. <laughs> Sean's going to be stoked for sure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you again so much for taking the time and talking to us. Uh, you're definitely talking to like two fans that were introduced to you working at a record store and have since been playing the album to the point where I think we've had to replace it once or twice. I hope 2021 and I know 2022 is going to be better for you. Thank you again so much. And before we say goodbye, which one of your songs do you want us to play as we say goodbye? I want to say run because that's the video we released most recently and it's great. Yep, yep it is <laughs> so very it great. Awesome. Here is run by the anti queens. If you have not listened to them, go check them out. Bandcamp, Spotify, they have their own website. They're awesome. They're taking over the world. Until next time, thank you again so much for being here. Take care. Thank Bye. you so much for having us. Thank you. You probably won't like me because I don't give in. I've never been the type of girl to show off all her skin But maybe if you take me on a second date Judging by my luck, I'll sit around and wait Judging by my luck, you're another mistake